All right, so this video is gonna be all inclusive. We're gonna go over the top three reasons for and against running. So be sure to stay tuned until the end because after we go through the for and against sections, I'll finish with the most important section, the ultimate takeaway. This is gonna have my recommendations on if you should or should not run and how to incorporate running if we decide it's best. So let's start with the for running side of things. Zoom, zoom. What, what was that? <laughs> oh, hey. Sup. Who are you? I'm Indiana Maverick Jones. I run for my health to recover faster between climbs. And I mean, you know why. So as always, be sure to check out the show notes. There's a few extra details in there and a lot of time and energy goes into writing those up for you guys. There's also links to all the research that we do. So if you wanna read those articles on your own, there's links to it for each section. All right, so the first topic, general health. Although this is one of the more important components of running, I think we all know that running is pretty good for your general health. So I don't need to go too deep into it. Let's be real. Running improves vitality, can reduce blood pressure, can help prevent chronic diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, osteoporosis, etc. In fact, studies have shown that even running at slower speeds is associated with a significant reduction in death from all causes of cardiovascular disease. We've known this for a while. It's good for your health. So why would you not want to do something good for your health? All right, so the second topic we're going to discuss is how running can help you recover faster. So cardiovascular training can help you recover faster between and during climbs. Research has shown that elite climbers had a higher VO2 max than regular climbers. And VO2, if you don't know is the maximum rate of oxygen consumption measured during incremental exercise. Basically, it's your ability to use oxygen during strenuous activity. There's research and general logic that if your body can utilize oxygen better and you have an improved aerobic capacity, it may help to optimize your climbing, particularly on longer routes. Research has also shown that more difficult routes will elicit increases in heart rate and lactic acid. We know that cardiovascular training can increase lactate thresholds, meaning your body is better able to handle increased levels of lactate because your body can process it better and actually use some of the lactate before it accumulates too greatly in your body. So just to summarize this section, since running can improve your aerobic baseline, it has a good chance that it can help you recover faster between climbs and even when you're taking your rest break like after that fourth clip. Okay, so the third thing that we're going to talk about in the four running category is going to be the psychological component. This is oftentimes the most overlooked component, but to me personally, it's the most important component. So there's plenty of research out there about the positive effects of exercise and mental health. The research repeatedly suggests that regular physical activity can significantly improve mental health and lessen symptoms of depression, anxiety, and stress. It is even suggested that physical activity can enhance mental well-being as equally as psychotherapy. In fact, just 20 to 40 minutes of aerobic exercise can improve anxiety and mood for several hours. The reason researchers think that exercise has such a positive impact on our mental health, strictly for like the mental reasons, not accounting for endorphins and whatnot, is due to the distraction hypothesis and the mastery or self-efficacy hypothesis. The distraction hypothesis suggests that in addition to the physiological benefits of exercise, there is a mental timeout that exercise provides for us. It can be a timeout from worrying, stressful, or negative thoughts. This timeout can provide a mental boost. In addition to that, the mastery or self-efficacy hypothesis states simply that the effect of completing an important or effortful task brings about a feeling of mastery, which itself can elevate mood. Yeah, hey, how's it going? Yeah, I've seen Free Solo. For all the running haters out there, here are the top three reasons why not to run if you're training for climbing. What? 
So the most important against reason for me is time. Most of us aren't professional athletes. We don't have all day to train. Rather, we have jobs, dogs, families, friends. We have climbing and running. No, you don't have time. You need to focus your time on one thing if you want to be good or great at it. The famous Ron Swanson once said, never half-ass two things, whole-ass one thing. The best neurosurgeon out there isn't also the best orthopedic surgeon. They spend their time specializing in certain components. If you're trying to be great at climbing, you need to dedicate time to climbing. It's that simple. Okay, but what if I have plenty of time? Well, two more big items, physical adaptation and recovery time. You see, the body only has a certain capacity to heal and recover. It even has these satellite cells which are called to damaged areas of the body to help them heal and recover faster. If you're running on a rest day, the body has to divide its resources. It will send some satellite cells to your fingers to get them stronger, and it'll send some of them down into your legs to repair them from all the running you did. You're stealing time from climbing and giving it to running. So earlier I used an example of a neurosurgeon not being the best orthopedic surgeon. That's in a sense related to specificity, which is our second reason why not to run. So training specificity basically states that training responses or adaptations are tightly coupled to the mode, frequency, and duration of the exercise performed. This means that the vast majority of training-induced adaptations occur only in the muscles that have been recruited during the exercise regimen with little or no adaptation occurring in the untrained muscular. Further, the principle of specificity predicts that the closer the training routine is to the requirements of the desired outcome, the better the outcome will be. Sounds simple, right? Training for climbing will make you better at climbing. Training for running is going to make you better at running, not climbing. I feel personally attacked. So the third reason is not meant to be a stab at running in general, but is more informative, I promise. If you're a climber looking to lose weight or manage your weight loss goals, running is not the only solution. It's not the mech of weight loss programs you may have hoped for. So doing strength training or bouldering may not appear to have the same immediate weight loss component, but what it does is ramp up your metabolism for longer. Resistance training results in greater muscle mass that necessitates more energy at rest for ongoing tissue maintenance. A one kilogram or 2.2 pound increase in trained muscle may increase resting metabolic rate by about 20 calories. Basically, the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you burn every day. Second, as an acute or short-term response, resistance training causes tissue microtrauma that requires relatively large amounts of energy for muscle remodeling, and, and that may persist for about 72 hours after training. Bam, so there you go. Go bouldering or do some resistance training for climbing. It's a good use of time, it's specific, and helps with your weight loss goals. All right, I promised you an ultimate takeaway, so here it is. Do what you want. Do what makes you feel good. I know that may seem like a cop-out answer, but the most important aspect may be the psychological aspect. We often place so much focus on our body and forget how important the mind is. On the other hand, if the aforementioned reasons just don't apply to you and you just don't love running, don't do it. If you enjoy running, or if you have time, or if you just love being outside and running is a good excuse to do that, and you can control the running intensity, then do it. My recommendation is run no more than like 30 minutes or 3 miles, whichever comes first, and don't allow your heart rate to go more than 75% of your theoretical max. Preferably plan on the same day that you do your other training. Multiple studies have shown that you don't have to run very far or very fast for it to be effective and have the benefits for your general health that we mentioned before. In fact, studies have shown that mild to moderate levels of running have the greatest impact even greater than strenuous running. So if you can control the distance and intensity, you get all the health impacts without the cost. Remember, running takes away healing time. The harder you run and the further you run, the more your body will have to repair, which takes away from your healing time for climbing. 
Okay, but why on the same day? There are also studies that show that cardiovascular training can have negative impacts on strength training, but doing cardio on the same day you do strength training can minimize the negative effects. So if it works out, climb, train, etc., then run later in the day at a mild to moderate pace in just a very short distance. All right, well, I hope this settles your internal debate on if you're gonna incorporate running into your training or not. Thanks again for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you already haven't. And until next time, train, climb, maybe run, repeat. Oh, Red Rock. Hey. It's so nice on the skin. Love it, dude. Climb all day. Yeah. Hey, Bishop. Yo. Ooh. Eyeballs, dude. Ah. This is sick. Oh. Free solo of the nose? You know Honold, dude? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there he is. Hey. Oh, sick, yeah. dude. Yeah. Oh, man. Rocklands, am I right, Ooh. dude? Such good climbing. Best climbing ever, dude. Santee Boulders, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, what's that? What's that over there? Hey, hey. Oh, oh, hey, you're still here. Jason, they're still watching. Oh, hey, oh. Dude, say something cool so they like the videos and subscribe for more awesome content. Um, like and subscribe for more super sweet vids, y'all. So lame, dude. So lame. I thought it was pretty good.